Okay, here we're going to do a limit problem involving the absolute value theorem. So here we're going to find the limit um, of the sequence x sub n equals negative 1 to the n plus n squared over n squared. And again, intuitively to me, what's going to happen, you know, if you plug in larger and larger values for n, let's forget about the first part for a moment. As we plug in larger and larger values for n, you know, we're going to get some big number squared over some big number squared. It's the same number. So this ratio, you know, if it wasn't for the negative 1 to the n, we would just get 1. Well, what's going to happen? Um, you know, the negative 1 to the n, all that's either going to do to the numerator is either subtract 1 or add 1. So again, to me, for large values of n, the, the numerator and the denominator are almost going to be exactly the same value, which makes me think this limit should equal 0. To justify this, again, we're going to use the absolute value theorem. So remember, that says if the limit of the absolute value of a sub n equals 0, or in this case, x sub n, if that happens, that tells us that the sequence uh, without the absolute value also equals 0. So we're going to use this little result. And the way that we're going to do this is, well, we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus n squared all over n squared. And all we're going to do is just break this up using some algebra. So we can write this as the limit as, goes, uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n squared plus n squared over n squared. So we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity, again, of negative 1 to the n over n squared well, n squared over n squared, that's just going to give us 1. So again, we can kind of look at these individually. And then the limit as n goes to infinity of just 1. Well, the limit as n goes to an infinity of 1 is just 1. The limit of a constant is the constant. So the only thing we really have to think about now is what's happening here. Well, again, I think it's pretty easy to argue. The top is always going to bounce back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1. The denominator is going to get arbitrarily large. So to me, this, this first limit should certainly go to 0. But again, to bring in this absolute value theorem, notice, um, so notice that the limit as n goes to infinity, if we take the absolute value of negative 1 to the n over n squared, so I'm just looking at the first part. Well, that's just going to equal the limit as n goes to infinity. If we take the absolute value of the numerator, uh, again, you know, without the absolute value, we're either getting positive 1 or negative 1. Uh, when we raise it, when we take the absolute value of it, it'll just become positive 1 over n squared. But again, uh, this limit as n goes to infinity, the denominator will get arbitrarily large. 1 over a big number is going to be 0. So hey, in fact, by the absolute value theorem, this first limit is actually going to be 0. So really, we're left with 0 plus 1. So again, in this case, our limit will simply converge to 1.